It's, it's, it's Bobby, and we back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. Today on the show, we have a man by the name of Jordan Wazi first appeared on the Purpose in the Youth podcast back, back on episode 25, uh, February 22nd of 2017. Welcome back on the show, my man. Thanks for having me back. <sighs> Dude. Thanks a, for having me back. A lot has happened, man. Yes. You... uh. Dude, it's it's amazing to see the progression and what you've been able to accomplish in six months. Like it's literally been six, seven months since February. I mean, yeah. we're talking two completely different people and just a complete different level of progression of just a world traveler now. I mean, at this point, you 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 were just in Europe. Yeah. You are working with Machine Gun Kelly, who is a rock star. I don't even know how to put like to describe him because he, you, he's just an animal. Um, I'm really excited to have you on the show, man. Thanks, man. I'm I'm excited to be back and see what you got for me. No, we're gonna be going. We're gonna be going. So <laughs> we'll get this started. But uh, if you guys don't know Jordan's story, go back to episode 25 first to get the full in detail of who he is. But to get to get us back on track, quick three to five minutes. Who is Jordan Wazi? Um. I am a cameraman, camera operator. Camera <laughs> operator. The operator. The operator. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> I like that. I like that too. I like that. I like that. Um, no, man, I'm a photo video dude for now Machine Gun Kelly. But uh, yeah, I'm from Indiana originally. Moved out to California about five years ago. Mm-hmm. It's going on like five or six. Yeah. It's crazy. You're now a California resident. You yeah, know? yeah. This is like, up, this yeah. is the new home. You it's, know? it's awesome, man. It's freaking November and it's going to be like 90. I love it. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. This is my first winter out here, dude. It's and I awesome. love it. But uh, yeah, man, I've been doing this for about two and a half years, like taking it serious. Um, it's been awesome. It's been a ride. Yeah. It's been a ride. It's been, it's been a ride. It's been cool though. It's, it's been up and downs and this past six months has been a whirlwind i'm exhausted yeah but can't, can't we don't stop <laughs> how did that original relationship with with machine gun kelly first happen um my buddy ace you know ace. i know ace yeah, yeah. shout out um, to ace so he's he's good friends with all of them and they needed somebody they were doing a radio show down in san diego and this was the day that Bloom dropped. Mm-hmm. And um, they needed somebody to do, like, you know, photo video. And Ace hit me up because, like, we would work on a lot of projects together where he'd be like, yo, do you want to shoot a video for Dizzy or this or that? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Why not? <laughs> you know, I say yes to a lot of things because I'm like, you never know what it's going to open. And so, um, of course, you know, Machine Gun Kelly, dude, <laughs> fucking growing up in the in- Indiana. Yeah, like, that's, that's a huge. It's huge, you know. Um and so I was like, absolutely. And so I uh, met him the day Bloom dropped, took that flower photo, um, and we just kind of like hit it off, man. It was cool. Uh, that first weekend, we did a radio show in San Diego. The next day was a Wango Tango in L.A. with like freaking, you know, Miley Cyrus. We saw Miley Cyrus doing, <laughs> um, yeah, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Uh, we saw her doing um, sound check. I was like, this is cool as fuck. Yeah. You know? It was just like the little thing that was like, you know. I'm actually in the presence of Miley Cyrus yeah, now, you yeah. know? We're talking about Miley Cyrus, which, yeah. It's a whole other story within yeah. her, but it's cool that you are that you were able to like step into that world of, like that's at the top almost, I would yeah. say. Yeah, it was cool, man. Um, so was that like a proving point? You know, like obviously you worked with him that for those couple shows and you yeah, started to build so a relationship. Basically like within that, like, I saw one of my homies at one of the shows, and he was like, you know, is this kind of like a trial run, or, like, are you his guy? And I'm like, you know, obviously I'm trying to be his dude, uh, you know, his camera guy, and, and, and you know, working as hard as I can, and it, you know. Uh, there was a couple other, like, one-off shows that they did that I was like, you know, I want to come, and, you know, I want to be there, and, you know, they wanted me to be there. And then, you know, they're about to go in Europe. And I was like, am, am I am I coming? And you actually asked that or Yeah, I was like, Am I coming? Because like I wanted to come and uh 
actually had another guy, but ended up taking me instead. Wow. And uh, that was my first time ever in Europe with them. And it was a crazy ride. It, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. And that was like a, fe- it was a festival run, right? Yeah, it was a festival run. He had a couple like of his own shows as well. Um, but yeah, man, it was, it was nuts. Yeah. It was and, nuts. and when you first got to Europe, that's when you started filming for like the Kelly vision series. No, well, no. yes and no. So the first like radio shows I filmed and I just, I knew he did Kelly visions. I used to watch Kelly visions. And so I just was, I was just, because one of the first things, and I told you this earlier, one of the first things he told me was, don't miss a moment. And that shit stuck, it's still with me. It's stuck with me to where, like, I do my best to not miss a moment. And I understand that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of moments with them, and it's hard being one person and trying to capture all that, but I you know, figured it out. Um, but you're dual wielding a, a video camera and a camera too. I want to make oh, sure we yeah. establish that. Like Jordan yeah, I've, isn't I've, just, I've taught you know, a lot of tours, they're hiring two different guys. One's doing videos, <laughs> one's just doing photos and you're doing yeah. both. Yeah. It's uh which sounds like a stressful, almost like a stressful thing because you have to each right. You know, you have, don't miss a moment. That's mm-hmm. essentially your role, but also yeah. You have to capture photos, and then you have to capture the video at yeah. the same time, yeah. which sounds... Well, for shows, it's it's at the same time. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, you never know what is going to happen at one of their shows. You know, like, we, we have the same set list, and we have the same, like, kind of the same thing every night, but there's always, like, one or two things that are different. And those are usually the one or two things that if you miss, it's like, did you get that? And you're like, you're in trouble. Yes, no. But, you know, it's I've gotten better to where I can capture those. What do you think has changed about you since working with Kells? Um, I think I'm harder on myself, um, which is, is, is it's good and bad, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it's good in the sense of like I spend a little bit more time on my work. And I kind of overanalyze things. Um, it's where I'm like, you know, I kind of, I'm able to get inside his head, you know, like, I feel like we're on the same like wavelength to where now we can just, we just, I just know what he wants to where like, you know, if I shoot a video or a photo, I can get it on the first try almost, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes. To where, like, now he can just do a little tweaks. Because, like, I know, like, oh, he, he won't like the way this shot is or that. And and I just feel like I've gotten better at, like, my shot selection. I feel like my creativity has been pushed. Mm-hmm. Um, because the thing is, like, you're at a higher level. So you're competing against a bunch of other people now. I mean, you know, it's always been, a, like, a competition mm-hmm. in a way. But now I feel like I've had to become more creative and I, my work ethic has been a little different to where like, you know, I kind of have to be, I have to be able to go with the flow, but I also like structure. I'm, yeah. I'm big on structure, but with them, it's being able to go with the flow. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, I've always you need that. been anxious about where I'm like, if I don't, I don't like the unexpected. I'm the same way. Yeah, I like I knowing I, I this how things are gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing this at this time. Yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna do this. But it's it's a part of it's a part of life. You never really know what's coming up, mm-hmm. and then like with them, you know, you never know what yeah. could, what could happen. And obviously, it, it like you said, when you start to build the relationship with him, you're starting to pick up on what he likes, what he mm-hmm. doesn't, and you can execute it better because you know what's what he's expect what he wants at the end of the day but you're able to also go back and kind of just edit these yeah. parts and clips that might not fit might not be yeah and there's a crew of you too this was not just kells like he's not just somebody that goes up on stage how many were you yeah. guys traveling uh so there's a guitar player a bass 
and keyboards and drum drums yeah. uh, so there's five total on stage wow and so um and there used to be a dj he he had to like take care of some stuff so there was only five but there was six that i had to take photos of and and you know try to get good content for them yeah you know because it's you know i want to you want to capture make it sure all. they're all getting their stuff you yeah. know um and it is hard you know i just there's times where i like to zone out <laughs> I try to enjoy the experience myself but. instead of just always having to capture yeah. it. I think that's probably got to be hard sometimes too because you have to capture these moments but when do you ever get a chance to just live to just put the camera down and mm. and live in that moment and really just mm. enjoy it for what it is because obviously you are you're in the presence of it mm. but you're looking at it behind the lens yeah and that's like the pros and cons of my job is like you know I get to experience these things, but I am kind of looking through a lens at certain points. But at the same time, like I'm documenting it so yeah. I can go back and look at it. Yeah. And like, that's the coolest fucking part. Like yeah. that, that I think that's awesome. Like I love looking back at like my old work. I love looking back at like footage that no one will see or like, you know, it's cool. Like it's, it's moments that I'm documenting and it, it it's really cool yeah. to know that like I have this and I did that. Yeah. You know? That's so cool because you can always go back and just mm -hmm. relive these moments. And mm -hmm. there's and like photos that I have that I'm like, I never would have thought I would have taken this or been just here. Timeless, or, timeless yeah, yeah, it's moments awesome. that you can never recapture. Yeah, like, it's almost so like what he cool. Said. It's so cool. Um, it's it's awesome. What have you enjoyed the most about making these videos? Uh, the Cali Vision, if we touched on it, but it's essentially mm -hmm. just these these recaps of behind the scenes of the tours of you guys on the road. What have you enjoyed? about creating them i've enjoyed so you know they're almost like puzzles for me i i would imagine you have you know because it's like hours and hours of content and now you have to put it into and possibly make it, an eight, make it entertaining ten yeah. make it entertaining because the thing is like you know tour videos are boring let's be honest mm -hmm. they're boring you know what you're gonna get you're gonna get fucking show footage you're gonna get the crowd like it they're boring every everyone is the same and i'm not saying ours are too different but the thing is like we try to transition it to where it shows more of like us just fucking around and like not as much show stuff definitely it's like you definitely know, fucking around. you know you know what his shows are like more than likely so like you don't have to show that you don't have to show these long montages. And that was something that I used to always do. And I used to always do stuff in chronological. Because I was just weird. I was like, I have to do it in chronological. And it's like, no, it's body, nobody knows. Yeah. So and the thing is, like, we'll take clips and we'll move them around. And that's why it's become more of a puzzle. And it is fun, but there's times where, like, we overthink it. And later we'll be like, or we'll think, like, an episode is like, eh. Mm -hmm. and we put it out and people are like this is my favorite one yeah. like yeah so that's another cool thing is like putting them out and like seeing people react to them i think like, as a fan it's it's cool to really see that uh, the other side of it like you mm -hmm. said you're going to the shows you're seeing the performance yeah. i don't need to get a recap i mean yeah it's great to watch yeah. a recap of and, that because and, and fans you can love it. to see like photos or videos from those shows like you know it's cool and, and if there's cool moments in those shows like obviously you want to show those, but people are jumping I mean, around is, and stuff. You can only show that so many times. I really suggest anybody to go, like, just tune into a couple of these episodes because before this podcast, I literally this morning just, like, binge watched them. And it's unbelievable to just see the behind scenes. I season mean, seven. Is season the, seven, yeah, we're talking season. about. Uh, I mean, at one point, Kells gets, like, arrested. They go through your tour bus. Uh, yeah, what that country was that was in like crazy Czech ass. Republic or something uh, Norway Norway well so I, swear. I always I always mix up I don't know if I have I always mix it up I don't know why I think it was Norway I think it was dang why can't I, I that, I'm that's sure the problem a, with Europe is I, it just runs together for yeah. me like I don't think I don't know like <laughs> They'll be like, we're here today. And I'm like, where is that? I don't know. You know, Where like, is it on the map? And in, in the United States, you're like, oh, I'm in Indiana. Yeah. Yep, I know where that and is. You know exactly where you are. Um, 
you know, I'm in Texas. Yep, I know where that is. But over there, it's like, we're in Czech Republic. And it's like, where? Where is that? <laughs> Give me a map. I don't know. Somebody show me where this um, is. So basically, I, it, I think it was Norway. Norway and Sweden is where we got in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, let's put it that. And basically, the first day. <laughs> so it was like a, it was like a three day. It was like a three day, like, just Pro- problems. Red, red flags. Fun with the police, basically. Okay. Like, hanging out with the police for three days. Um, <laughs> hanging out with the police. Yeah, okay. so the first day, uh, the night before, we ended up, like, going out to some bar after the show. And we completely forgot that we were taking a four-hour ferry ride the next day to the next place. And with these ferry rides, you put the bus on the ferries and like your cars and stuff like that. And then you ride up top or whatever. And you know, a couple of times, uh, or yeah, you'd be up on top of the, the bo- deck, the upper deck. The boat. Yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. I'm spacing. And we, we got off. It was after like four hours. We're all exhausted. You know, you didn't get much sleep the night before we're starving. We get off and we're walking and like, this we see like a police officer like just kind of like looking for people and like pull us aside asked us some questions let us go and then later the bus driver calls us because they're searching the bus and of course they smoke they have weed yeah so then they ended up searching the bus we got like strip searched so that was that's not fun that was interesting you're just like dude i'm just trying to film this stuff Let, let me go yeah um and so basically, like, they took, you know, they took their time searching the bus. We were there for like a good two hours. Oh, man. Um, and they let us go. And then, so they did this, sh- we did the show. And then the next day, he was on stage and smoked. And then he was on the front page. Somebody like handed it to him, right? I saw the video. Yeah. Somebody handed Someone him Someone handed a, it a from one the, or a roach or yeah. something. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> Like, hours later, it ended up being on the Norway newspaper or something like that, where it was like, Machine Gun Kelly smokes weed on stage. And then we found out that the undercover cops were coming to our bus. <laughs> so then... Um, I guess, so they're tight over there about that stuff, huh? Yes and no. Like, bro, they let me film the entire thing and did not stop me. Like, they just go, can we see this? And we're like, no. And they're like, hmm, okay. You know, but they were tight about weed. Yes, absolutely. They 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 were not allowing that whatsoever. Yeah. Um. So they ended up like arresting him for like an hour, and then they searched our bus again. We're like, you're not gonna find anything. Nothing has changed in a couple just hours. Took shit. Yeah. The day before. Yeah. But basically, they told them that we were coming, so they were just like ready to get us. Period. And they were just like, can we leave? Can we leave? And it was like another hour and a half. So it was just. Just nonsense. Just nonsense. Meanwhile, these guys are just like, can we drink at least? They're taking all of it. Yeah, you have it all. Yeah, it's in one of those. I know. <laughs> There's a lot in there that, you know, we cut because it's just, it's it's hysterical stuff. But, um, and this tour was huge. I mean, I have a list. You guys touched the 27 World Tour, right? That's what, that, that was, or that was, well, that was, no, the, that was before. That was the summer festival. Okay. Run. And then we came back. We were supposed to go on tour at Lincoln Park, and then we went back to Europe for the 27. Okay. Tour. Yeah. So is that going to be season eight then for, like, no. No. We're not just going to run out. I don't know how it is. We kind of stopped. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. <Yeah. laughs> There's enough that. It's coming back, though. Like, it's coming back. We just, you know, been busy, and he's been pulled in, like, because the thing is, basically, I do the episodes. He, you know, will or like we both do the episodes i shouldn't say i do the episodes like we both do the episodes to where it's a collaborative thing where i'll get it to a certain point he'll chop it up then i'll go back and kind of mess with it again and then you know it's kind of like back and forth back and forth there's some times where i'll hit it right away and he's like good send it he'll make it he always makes like a couple little changes you know and they're always like good changes and then We put it out, but the thing is, like, obviously, I can't put it out until it's like approved by him. So he's been so busy, like, he dude, he's shooting a movie right now. 
That's unreal. Sandra Bullock and yeah. John. And you guys Malkovich. just shot that music video. We just South shot Central. the music video over there. He did that for the Netflix movie that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Bright. Um, so yeah, man, he's been busy since we got back, and it's just like. It's not just him though. You're now part of that, you know. Yeah, I think it's so cool. Is that yeah? It is. you cool. you are part of really. I would say a superstar's lifestyle. You know, he's shooting movies. He's on <laughs> European yeah. tours. He's mm-hmm. doing festivals. There's obviously still room for him to grow, but he yeah, really is. I feel like up we top. haven't even hit his highest point. Yeah, you know, and that's awesome. That's something that we all realize, and something that like. You know, it, it's it's patient. It's a lot of patience. Cause say say that say that one more time. I want yeah. I want I want the listeners to to really hear what he said because this is truthful to whatever you're trying to do. What was it you just said? Oh, it's a lot of patience. A lot of patience. Yeah, it's a lot of patience. Um, Thank you. Which nobody has. Nobody <laughs> anymore. <laughs> like you know, everyone's very ADHD. Yeah. I'm moving the entire time. <laughs> but. uh yeah, man, it's patience. Like we understand, we just keep telling ourselves, like, just grind the rest of this year. And 2018 is about to be awesome, and it is. It's it's about to be really cool. Dope. And it's cool because you literally built these relationships with these guys six months ago. But six months being on the road and traveling so much that uh-huh. it, it escalates that relationship to as if you have known them for ten years. Yeah, because you're living and you're you live with, with them, eating yeah. and you're going to the concerts mm-hmm. with them and you're doing literally everything with them. You experience being arrested by the cops with them. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Check it off the bucket so list. Crazy, yeah. Man. yeah, that day was uh, nuts. Thinking of the 27 World Tour, uh, UK, Germany, Netherlands, Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Czech Republic, Poland, Denmark, Norway, Russia. What one specific city stands out the most to you? Prague. Prague. Just because that show is... 3,000, like 300. I mean, it was just... That's deep. Bro, like, from the green room, you could just hear them chanting. I mean, granted, like, every night you could hear that. It was sick. You know, the, just the chanting and stuff like that. But, like, it was like a roar. It was... I got goosebumps when we walked out there. Like, dude, every night, like, when I would film, like, I would get, like, a little... Like, you know, like, you kind of well up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it was cool because it's like, damn, I'm actually doing this yeah. shit. And like, I'm I'm with people <laughs> that like, I'm with people that like are impacting the crowd. And like, you see people crying and shit. Like, that. it, it, it's cool, man. It's really cool. These aren't just fans that are, or these aren't. Let me say, these aren't just people in the crowd that they got pulled in by their friend last minute. Oh, let's go to this Machine Gun Kelly concert. Yeah. This is people that the tickets dropped. They bought them as soon as they came uh-huh. out, and they waited. Yeah, 24 Prague hours was sold in line. out, man. It was sold all the way out. I mean, that venue was crazy. Does he feed off of that when he's seeing somebody cry? And I, I, I definitely have seen in the past, not just since you've been working with him, but he's definitely been somebody that has pulled fans on stage, and he, mm-hmm. it, he really does care about the impact that he has on on mm-hmm. these kids. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Man. I mean, he like definitely he always wants it to be like an amazing show. Yeah. You know, and they're very hard on themselves. We're very hard on ourselves to where like, you know, even if I like miss something, I'm like, damn, like I could have had a great show, but mm-hmm. if something messes up or like if one of their mics messes up or, you know, they play a note wrong, like they could have an amazing show, but they'll walk off and be like, that was terrible. Yeah. Cause you always want, you always feel like there's a room and that's for what's cool is like they truly care that the fans get the best experience possible, and it's cool to be like with people like that that truly care about like what they're doing, and you know, to have the, the and their fans, man, their fans are awesome, you know, like the Europe fans are nuts, they go crazy, nuts, and that, cause I, I mean, I haven't really experienced the U.S. so. But uh, we did like one or two shows, and that that was awesome. Um, that was in the beginning. It was like a festival too, right? That was. We did the festivals. Festivals are hard because I mean it's not always like his fans. It could be people but, that are there. I mean, to they, see somebody they else. kill festivals. They yeah. like they do a really really good job at festivals, and uh, but like no, we had like a couple one offs. We had like North Dakota, random. Oh, it was very random. Random. Very random. <laughs> but that was before we went back um, to 
to Europe. So we had North Dakota and Minnesota and Michigan. Where was the show with the 90,000 people of the crowd roaring? It was in like Ger- a Germany. Oh, that was – okay, that was yeah. in Europe. That was the second show I ever did with him. Like, that was the second festival show ever, and that was nuts. <laughs> That video went everywhere. Was I mean, so it was cool. literally a sea of people. Mm-hmm. It, I was shook watching it. I, I could feel it because in your video, it slows down. Yeah. And it's just, you just like a sea see of people just jumping in joy yeah. and just like living in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's actually, it, 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 it gives me the chills thinking about it because that is almost like that is as an artist and as for you being in this industry, like that is the peak. That is what you do, what you do. And that's yeah. why you capture these moments yeah. because I would have never saw that. And people there obviously were there for it, but you're able to, which is what I think is so cool about film and um, documenting and photos is that you capture these moments that are priceless. Mm-hmm. Like you will look at that footage in 10 years from now and be yeah. like, damn, we really did that. <laughs> like that's amazing, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. stuff that a lot of people will never get to. Even being a film. I just think it's cool to be a part of like, as simple as like um like these these performances some of them are were recorded and like online and like you can see me like running around in the background <laughs> i'm like this is running, 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 yeah. sat, 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 running, running, i'm like video. frozen in time within that video and it's cool and like yeah it's 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 a cool ass memory man it's cool such an impact yeah that that show was I was like, damn, are all these shows like this? I'm in. I'm in. Sign me up. <laughs> My job is about to be easy as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Just point Just and shoot. Just point and shoot all day long. <laughs> uh, tough subject, but I know you guys were going to go on tour of Lincoln Park. Um, you did. A call, it was about three shows. You guys opened up for them. Uh-huh. Um, and obviously with Chester passing was the whole industry – I mean, just the world really shut down. It was really uh, powerful, and um, it's hard to even think about because it's it's just not, uh, you know, nobody deserves that, and it's hard because you see people and you think everything could be perfect in their life, and sometimes it isn't. You know, don't judge a book by its cover Mm because obviously there's something inside. But uh, with you guys being so close to like that music, and obviously you guys are about to go on tour with them, were you guys able to? to find something positive out of such a negative situation. And I don't mean obviously with, with his, with him passing is, is very tough and it's very hard. Uh, but was there any, anything that you guys were kind of saying to get like as a team or it just had, uh, to kind of uplift for such a tough situation? Um, I think it was a wake up call in the sense of like, they were like this tour, this tour was going to help a lot of stuff, you know, I think, it, you know, I think it was going to be amphitheaters every night, probably majority of them all sold out, you know. And how big are we talking? Like 10,000 crowd? Five, more, more than that. More? Yeah. Like, you know, like the outdoor amphitheaters, yeah. like it was because it was in the summertime and that would have been every night for, I think, like a little over a month. And, um... Yeah, man, they were, they, they were, they knew about it a little bit more than, or like before I did. Um, but obviously I was excited for that. Cause like you grow up listening to Lincoln Park and like, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I never got to meet Chester, but I got to see them perform live and I got like that really cool, like shot of him. Like, obviously I'm going to hold on to that forever. Yeah, man, this, it's priceless. <laughs> um, but I never got to meet him, but you know. It was still cool seeing him live, and dude's a monster. Yeah, he just like sounds exactly like he did on the record, yeah. if not better. Yeah, and, like, um, it was cool, man. I was excited because I was like, I get to see this every night, you know. And and the the shitty part is, is like, I remember the show that I got the footage. Kells came out, did bleed out, um, with them and. You know, I couldn't decide if I was going to take photo or video. Obviously, I wanted to take video, and I was, like, trying to take photos, and it was just, it was hard. I was, like, so, like, overwhelmed and excited, and, mm-hmm. and then afterwards, he was like, don't worry, like, we'll have more chances, 
no, that was like the last time. And it was it was wild because it's like you sit there and you go like, oh, I have more opportunities, da da da. But in reality, it's like, you know, nope, you got taken away. Yeah, never have that opportunity again. But you did get to, you did get to capture something. I big. did get to capture something awesome. You know, his last performance with them, which is cool. You know, yeah. that's something that we'll hold on to forever, and I'll hold on to forever, and. uh it was cool, man. I got like the little Lincoln Park pass from that tour, so Damn. I'll always hold on to that. Yeah, it was cool, man. I, it was gonna be an awesome time, but I think one of the things we we picked up and learned from that was basically like stuff can be taken away very easily, and I think it made us work harder, you know, because we're like, okay, we're not we're not given this opportunity, so we gotta create a new opportunity. Yeah. And that's, to, and that's how the 27, the is that how 27? No, they were already, already planned. Yeah, that's why we went back to Europe. Because okay. originally it was supposed to be a U.S. tour. So they're like, we're not going to go U.S. twice. But we're going to end up, like, we, they were going to do his own tour, which we're still going to do a North American tour mm -hmm. for the album. I got you. Um, That's going to be, like, I think sometime early next year. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, so we were supposed. To, that's why I we went to Europe twice, because <laughs> we were supposed to do it U.S. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but biggest thing we learned from that was just you know, life is obviously precious. Can be taken away. Be happy, mm -hmm. you know. Be happy with the ones you got around you. Um, and yeah, just you got to keep working because like it was a cool opportunity, but it just wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. Mental health is a real serious thing that yeah, I, man, suicide I, sucks. <laughs> it does, yeah. Uh, My mom's had like three people taken from like friends and family of suicide, and it's it's a very it's not it's right. Shitty man. It doesn't matter the age. It's just it's it's so shitty. Yeah, it's so shitty. And that's you know the whole logic record right now is really I know is really hitting hard because I there's mm -hmm. some analytics of how many more calls they got ever since mm -hmm. that record came out, and it's. It's powerful to see what music really can do for people. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I love music so much. And that's why I love... Music's awesome, dude. Just a lot of this podcast <laughs> has been focused on people in that industry because I don't create music. I don't think I ever will. Maybe maybe one day. I don't know. But I, it's part of my daily life. When I go to the gym, music. When I'm driving around, music. Uh, mm -hmm. It picks you up. It, it keeps you yeah. leveled when you need it to. It's, it's yeah. so powerful in that, uh, you know something like that it's it obviously really tough for everybody yeah um what do you want to see happen in the next couple months or anything that you can share that you're excited about i already know what's happening because we have it all planned out. Like, no i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, if you could share please uh, nah. i want to know what wazzy's up to in the next couple nah, months. we just got some like shows and stuff like that but um those are all announced but like now nah, basically like within these next couple months like you know we shot a music video for a new song in Europe that's coming out. And Super dope, I heard. Yeah. Super dope. <laughs> yeah, you saw it. That's and then, dope, man. Uh, really dope. We're about to shoot another one for a record that he was performing over there. Um, so that'd be cool. I'm excited for that. So we'll have two coming out. And then that home record, excuse me, Um, that home record is coming out. It's already out. Um, the music video is coming out Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. which this week. It's coming up. That's yeah. right around the corner, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. I'm excited already. for people to see that. I, I think we've. I think Kels has probably watched it a hundred times. Wow, <laughs> he's pumped. Then. Yeah, he's pumped. Um, I've probably watched it at least close to at least five, like five times. You know, yeah, it's still a good amount. Yeah, but every time I see it, it's 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 really cool. Um, it takes place like in that universe, which is cool. But so dope. um, so. We have that, and then, like, he's got, like, this cool, like, charity event that he's doing in Cleveland, and he's got, like, this huge stadium show that he's doing in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, it's about, it's like, 5,000 people or something like that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 5,000 people just yeah. roaring. Yeah, in, in his hometown. Yeah. So that's about to be... Cleveland? Yeah. The land, baby. Yeah. <laughs> the land. That's about to be really, really <laughs> cool. And then the 29th, we got, like, something in New Orleans, and then... Top of the year, man. January 2nd, we go to New Zealand. Wow. New Zealand. Yeah. 
I just looked at like where Australia was on the map the other day, and New Zealand's right next to him. Like that is so. It's like yeah. a fourteen hour like, flight wanna, from here. I want to go to Australia really bad. Um, Fly right over. You guys are gonna be right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Come on, he can, he can find a show over there. Yeah, Do a right. little party or something. I don't know. But uh, the fact that we're going to New Zealand is pretty cool. I mean, you know, I've got to see the whole U.S. But the fact that I've been able to see Europe and like these other places is really cool. You're like on world tours now. That's mm-hmm. it. Doesn't get much higher than that until we start yeah. going to Mars and stuff. Maybe you'll do some shows out there. But yeah, later next year. Later next year. Yeah. Oh word! I didn't. I didn't realize you guys had that book. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys had that book. Yeah, it's a big market out there. How we talked about it earlier. Um, how has it been for you to really found? your own creative like Jordan Wazi, the guy with the yellow font on his images, the color like the color grading, you kinda just I can see a picture and I know it's you, which I think is obviously really good because yeah. I feel like that as a photographer, videographer, yeah, you want to great. establish your own brand. Yeah. How has it been for you to really establish like your own image, like literally? I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know? I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I didn't go to school for this, none of that. And I, I basically just, like, I did things that I thought, like, worked and, and looked cool. And they just happened to develop into, like, my style. Like, people have always said, oh, I can see your stuff and, like, know it's you. And But obviously, when you see your own work, you're, like, just I don't, part see, of the norm. I don't see that, you know? So it's cool when people are, like, I can tell your work apart from other people or, like, I know that's you. I'm, like, cool, I'm doing something, right? <laughs> but I don't know what I'm doing, man. I, I'm learning as I go, and I think that's been awesome. Yeah, um, it's hard sometimes, but I think it's awesome. Yeah, and you're obviously very confident with mm-hmm. what you post. You I just like I'm confident with what I post, and the thing is that I've always told myself is like, no matter what I what I'm given, like I'll make it work. So I think it's really important across the board. Uh huh. Take the available resources, or yeah. take a, take. If take advantage could, of what you have presented like, in front it could of you. be like a photo that's like meh but if you add like a certain color to it or edit it a certain way you can take it to that next level and or like a video like you may only have a certain amount of clips but how can you make that interesting i've always find that like a fun challenge and the thing is you know i just i just blanked but no it's always been like a fun challenge to to like try to make things interesting without like stressing it too much yeah without stressing it too much you know because with those like photos and videos i i post them or i'll do a video for someone and i'm on to the next one i maybe read the comments like the first day and then i never look at it again yeah you don't overthink i think i think that is really important with anything and creative or when you're like going down your own path Mm. is don't overthink things you know Mm -hmm. i remember when i first started doing podcasts and stuff i always like get caught up in it and even sometimes before people come in even like today i'm looking at questions i have like is this the right thing is this and it it's really just go with the flow yeah and just be confident in who you are and what Mm -hmm. you are able to actually create yeah and know that somebody's gonna think it's dope and maybe not at Uh first People at first probably weren't rocking with your images and what you were posting online, but yeah, you I mean, stayed consistent, and then all of a sudden you're getting hundreds yeah, of comments. Yeah, you basically just try new things, and um, you know, like even with the yellow font, man, like I don't even remember. I just was like, I'm just gonna do this. I just did it on one of my homies, or on like a picture of one of my homies, and posted it, and people didn't, you know respond to it right away Mm -hmm. they weren't like what is this (laughs) you know and then i just kept kind of doing it and doing it and i almost stopped a couple times and people were like nah this is cool this is cool i'm like okay all right fine so then i kept doing it and doing it and then when i met kells like i did it with one of his photos he thought it was cool and yeah man yellow font is everywhere yeah I'm not gonna say I brought it back, but I brought it back. The Jordan Wazi font. That's what yeah. I'm gonna start referring to when I see when I see. But the, it's cool. There's I nothing see... I can do about it. Like mm-hmm. I can't like be like, yo, like don't use the font. Like, yeah. cause I didn't come up with it. Yeah, I just brought the wave back. 
Sure. Like I said, I think it's just sure. a pat on your it's just a pat on your back because at yeah, the end it's of the cool, day, you man. know it's awesome. you've been doing this for a long time. It's documented. You can look at your old images. It, you mm. kind of started this a while ago. Yeah, there's but proof. It's, it, it, there proof is proof, the but thing. I think it's it is like I said, you just got to take it as a pat on the back. That yeah, people yeah, are yeah. doing it, and I don't like that's uh, people have tagged me and stuff where they're like they'll they'll be like oh uh, he's jocking or this or that, but it's like at first I was a little angry because I was like damn like people are straight up just taking this and like blatantly saw mine and then took it and you're just like what but there's nothing you can do about it and it, you just take it as a compliment you're like you did something cool that they wanted to take yeah that's awesome you kind of like brought something new to the realm and i think that's so important you know it's like there's so many different people out there doing different things and it's like the when everyone's doing the same thing, I should say there's so many people doing the same things. Mm -hmm. The ones who move on are doing something different, bringing something new to the table. And, you know, it's just like a tiny little yeah. thing. But, it, you know, I'm speaking in a grander scheme where it's like it's a tiny little impact that like. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as a creative, that's what you want to get to is when you found that like lane of yours. Now I got to find the next thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to have to make a quick lane <laughs> shift and try something yeah. new since everybody yeah. wants to hop on it. Yeah. But it's cool. It, it's, it's, that's pushed me as well because I'm like, how can I make this my own as well? Mm -hmm. You know, it's where people are like, you know, he does it the best. He's the best. Yeah. What do you think your best skill is? I think being able to make something out of nothing. For real. Like, I can, I honestly believe I can make something out of nothing. You give me three clips, tell me to make promo or this or that, I can do it. And you will like it. <laughs> and I'll make sure you like it. You know, that's, I, I genuinely believe that's one of my best things. I will make it work. And if something doesn't work right away, I'll figure it out, you know? And, and sometimes I, I've failed a couple of times where it doesn't work, but I'm going to try. Yeah. You know, I think that's my biggest thing. I've always told myself I make it work. Yeah. It's like a, a reminder that you have, you are going to make it work and you almost have to, right? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Tell people, no, I can't do this. Yeah. I can't. There's always. Don't ever tell. Say you can't. There's always a yeah, way it's around it, and you don't want to tell somebody when you're, especially a possible client that could turn into yeah. something big. Sorry, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. See you later, bro. All right, yeah. you can't do it. And I'll I find think somebody that else. I think that's made me grow, you know, faster because it's pushed my limits. It's where it's like, you know, they're like, "Can you do this certain effect?" And I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'll find a way. And then, like, you go on YouTube and figure out how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube University. The beautiful you yeah, yeah, YouTube University. YouTube it costs University. nothing. It costs yeah. nothing to go there. It costs nothing, man. Except your internet. No, I'm yeah. Sure. Except the internet. <laughs> you, could jack, you could jack it from yeah, somebody. Yeah. Go to it's Starbucks. Free. It's, free. <laughs> it's free. But, uh, yeah, no, man. I, I think just being able to make something out of nothing is. Definitely. I'll tell you what, that's going to be like this this episode's takeaway for sure that, that's probably going to be like the title of this episode because uh that's really like in, inspiring and truthful uh last and last episode if people don't remember or if they just heard it uh is people are always watching you and that's been one of the biggest takeaways that i've had from this entire project yeah, honestly man. you're not even people just saying it, that people always are watching. always watching you they might not be showing you likes love comments they might not even follow you <laughs> Yeah. But there are people out there that are watching your every move, yeah. and you have to treat it yeah. like you're at the top and already. That's just because of social media, man. Because it's like, you know, you'll see something on the explore page, you'll click on it, and you'll be like, "Oh, this is cool," but not maybe like care to know who it is, and you move on. That someone saw your shit without even noticing it, and it's like there's so many eyes on so many different things, and like. You can look at people's Insta stories and see what they're doing without liking their posts or just scroll. And it's just, it's almost weird. Like we've become like very stalkers. Like, yeah. We've become stalkers. stalkers. Exactly, yeah, somebody told, up. somebody said We're something. We're low level stalkers. That's exactly man. what it is. Like it's, it's weird. But at the same time, it's, 
kind of cool because like you can see into other people's minds and, and and see what they're creating like i'm talking like in like photo spectrum or like design spectrum like normal lifestyle stuff then it gets a little weird because yeah. you're like <laughs> i'm looking at what you did on your birthday yeah. and you're like this is weird, this is weird. yeah <laughs> but like being able to like see other people's work and it just be very accessible i think is another really cool thing about social media and like yeah. being able to connect with people like i met someone the other day who we're like, how did we become cool? And we're like, social media. Like, we just followed each other. And and it's my homie Ben, who's schoolboys dude. Shout out to Ben. Shout out Ben. <laughs> um, he, and, and yeah, man, we, we chopped it up for a good amount of time. And it was just, it's cool. Like, that's what social media, I think, is cool about. Is like, you can meet a lot of cool people through it. And there's also, you know. Some weirdos. Yeah, I think it. I think it's super cool to the fact that you can get insight on. Obviously, with it, yeah, it sticks. I know I gotta like get these glued or something. But uh, obviously, it sounds weird saying like you're stocking people's life and whatnot. But the cool part is you can really see insight on people that you maybe are superstars to you. You know, people that follow you or that are really inspired by you. They want to see yeah. what you're doing on the day to day, and they can look at your IG story or yeah. Uh, it's cool because it, it really has opened up the communication line. Like I can, mm. I can send a Hail Mary DM to whoever. They may not respond, but they if may not they respond, do, but what if the cha- there, there's that chance. I sent, there is that I chance. sent something to a director the other day. I, I was like, this is one of my favorite videos and I tagged them and they responded and I was like, wow, wow, that's wow. pretty cool. Yeah. Like I didn't expect you to respond whatsoever. And they just said, thank you. I appreciate it. And I was like, damn that's cool that's super cool that's cool but you know i, I, I don't even do that most of the time. <laughs> it's too, it, it, it's too big know, out right? here you know what I mean? no, well, he's got bigger things he's got bigger fish no, to fry no, no. but it was cool man i was like you know it's that it's that possibility with, that you yeah. can connect with people and as weird as it might be social media it's cool because i've definitely followed with people and then you finally meet in person mm-hmm. and you're like dude i feel like we've known each other because we've been right? we've been it's rocking weird. with each and other it's, it's almost weird when like you have followed somebody we're talking about social media heavily um but it's like we live in man yeah uh it's almost weird how like if you have i know you've probably had this experience where like you follow somebody for a certain amount of time you meet them in person and like you do feel like you know them absolutely and so it's like it would be weird to almost act like a stranger yeah yeah or you you'll ask quite i see people that ask questions Maybe yeah, not to me, ask but I'm questions like, and you're like, yo, you, you know the answers. Like, you know you the answers. That, don't yeah. I mean, I get it. You're trying to but like But you don't want to feel like yeah. you're yeah, you start the, it's you're weird. trying to like have a conversation, it's so I weird. get it. You're trying to get the mm-hmm. convo flowing, but yeah. at the same time, it's we all we we see each other's work, we know what's going on. Yeah, you know, yeah. we we don't gotta lie to it's cool though. It is super cool. What's a question that you wish somebody would ask you? I don't know. You don't know? talking majority of the time so what's a question that i would like someone to ask how you doing how you doing i'm great Thank you. you are great i would <laughs> imagine you are doing pretty great that's fair yeah i don't know i really don't what question would you ask me <laughs> i mean i guess really that the like what do you mean by that like is it just something something that, that you just, that you that maybe has literally sat inside of you and you just you want to like say it you know man i think what inspires you what why uh what have you enjoyed the most with working with kells what you know it's it's really the the question the reason i I asked the question is maybe it gives you a chance to say something that you've been wanting to say and not necessarily have had the platform to say it which i think we've definitely touched on a lot of things that we've talked about clearly in this podcast so far Mm -hmm. um obviously you're working hard you you have these opportunities you you have bigger opportunities coming down the line um it's crazy um damn man i don't know we can we can we can hit the pass button we can hit the pass real quick we don't we don't have to waste no time on that that's all right um what has been one of your biggest failures and what have you learned from it Biggest failures. Can mean the last six months, or it could be literally the last twenty-three years of the Jordan Wazi life. Biggest failures. 
I don't know. I don't think. I don't like to look at stuff at like failing. I don't think there's something that's been like I've failed completely. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you can learn from a certain situation, I feel like it's not a failure. I completely agree. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's with relationships. Like, that's with like relationships or work. Like, if someone didn't like the work or or you had a bad relationship with so and so, like. It might have been like a failure, but if you learned how to do something different, it's not a failure, mm-hmm. in my opinion. I agree. So I honestly don't know. I think it's all perspective. I, there's nothing how you that look at there's things. nothing that sticks out that's been like a fail. Yeah, it's, it's just been, it's I've been a had bad learned. moments, you know, um, but nothing that's like crazy sticking out in my head right now. That's actually a really good thing, I think. I uh, yeah. I think that honestly is yeah. because it means you really haven't dwelled on anything that's happened in the past. I'm very much like I said, like on to the next one. I, you you got the, you put the blinders on and you just keep going, cause like not, not a lot of the stuff out there just doesn't matter. You know, a lot of opinions from people don't matter. Like I said, I only read the comments maybe the first day I drop a video. Cause those are like the people that truly usually care to see the video. And then I never go back because I, I've done it a couple times. Cause then it's like stupid people are like, man, why does this dude people have this or that? And you're just like, you click on their profile or they'll be like, this video sucks. And you'll click on their profile. And it's like some person who shoots like little homemade soccer videos. And you're just like, okay, why am I even letting this Pull, you can't, you can't, you can't let it. anyone on the internet bother you. I don't know. I agree. Yeah. It makes sense though. Uh, you can't let things bother you. Yeah. You just got to keep moving and keep and, the and, blinders on and literally just keep making the small steady progress every single day. Mm. And then eventually you get to, cause none of that matters. It doesn't, it's good to get opinions, but I, yeah. I, you know, I like getting opinions. Yeah. I love getting opinions. I love showing people like work and I'm, you know, I love getting, I always, you know, I asked you, I was like, after you watch the video, I was like, what's your honest opinion? I'm not afraid of people being honest, Mm -hmm. you know, like I rather someone be honest with me. Absolutely. You know, Mm -hmm. I, if I rather them not be like, that was amazing. This is great. It's like, okay. Yeah. But what'd you really think of it? And I think it depends on the person if they're going to be able to stay honest with you. You know, maybe you don't want to like offend somebody and be like, yeah, this sucks. Right. But I try to be as honest as I can with people because I, even though I know my opinion might not change the way they roll out, whatever they're doing, Mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt me to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I'm like, yeah, dude, this video sucks, bro. Like Mm -hmm. you got to scrap this and start over. I, I just tell people how it is and I'll, and I think it's just how you'd say it is is what what really makes Mm -hmm. it matter. If you're, Hey man, this is good. I just I wasn't a fan of this. This versus, dude, yo, what yeah. are you doing, bro? Like this, uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, even when you just show me that video, that is dope. Like uh-huh. I truly, genuinely mean like dope. Like, uh-huh. it's, it's catchy. When people see it, they're gonna be like, yo, what? The, what is this? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of coloring and mm-hmm. and things pop up into the image and the jacket turns color in the face and there's a moon. And it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So it's it's definitely super dope and yeah, uh, it's amazing to see. Like I started off the podcast to see the progress that you've made in in nine months. Uh, six. It six. <laughs> Has it been six February March? Yeah. That's six, right? Nine. Oh, it is. Yeah. Wow. Well, it came out. Well, dude, this came out. Our podcast came out in. February. Oh, but yeah, yeah, I didn't. It was say, recorded right. in January. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was recorded right, in January. Right. So mm-hmm. at least from when that was documented, it's it's amazing to see that type of progress in in such a short amount of time. It might people might say nine months is a long time, but when you yeah really spread it out if it doesn't it feel just, like it's it been. doesn't feel like it it feels like it's yesterday we yeah. were at branville's house shooting it at like yeah. 1 a.m in the morning i distinctively yeah. remember that podcast like yes. so much uh you said earlier that you like structure mm-hmm. when you're obviously i know when you're on the road and it's like craziness it's hard to really get into some type of routine but when you're able to get into routine what does your day-to-day look like um so basically i would try to get up you know if I had any photos or videos to left left over to edit, I would get those done. Um, surf the internet, kind of wake up, eat, shower, shower at like the venues and stuff. Um, and then yeah, they it, Kels would get up, and then we you know 
kind of get the day going uh, about three o'clock four (laughs) (laughs) uh and like doors would open at seven so i'd always like try to get the go out and get the crowd at like 6 30 right like right when it's like at the peak yeah the peak so that you get like if it's a long line you can get the full length um and then yeah i usually talk to the people up front and make my way down that's another thing i just don't you know i'm not a big like talker yeah you know that's always been like you don't care yeah (laughs) i'm gonna shoot yeah but the thing is like you know you gotta get the questions from them stuff like that so um I was I got out of my comfort zone a little bit with that stuff, so that was cool. I like it. You got <laughs> you got to step outside the yeah, element, you know. It was cool. There was one show where um, I think it was uh, Brixton or something like that. It doesn't matter, but uh, our security guy and I went out there to film the line, and you know I'd go down the line, and they weren't yelling, or they weren't like screaming, and they would like. It, it, the first half would scream and then the last half would just kind of stare at me. And I'm like, come on, awesome. come awesome. on. So then I would tell them all and got to the point where I did like five times and, and they were just like, come on, like what? And I was like screaming at them. Give me something. I was, I was like, I was back in football days where I was just like yelling. I was like, <laughs> come on, let's go. And then uh, read, like, okay. read our security guys, like jumping, like <laughs> hyping them up or it, it was crazy. It was cool, but it was cool. I mean, so that I, I, I kind of turned like some of the crowd stuff into like games when I went out there. Like well, one of the times the line was split in two, and I pointed the camera at one of the, one side, and I had them battle Make each other. Make it like other. a battle. Make it yeah, a I game. Had them battle each other, and um, or, or in uh, Germany, I learned some German to kind of break the ice because they wouldn't. They would look at me crazy, like, and I was like, "What? Like, it's awkward enough for me to like." be out there with the camera like <laughs> filming and you don't maybe know who i am and you're like who's this random who is person? this guy yeah and that's just me thinking that yeah. <laughs> but uh i found out that you know it's just like us trying to speak their language we're embarrassed they're embarrassed sometimes to speak english so you know when i'm like hey do you want to say something they're not always like yeah absolutely you know some people so, don't want to be part of it and or some they people don't love it or some they didn't love it. or they didn't know what i was saying so i learned like a little bit of german I, I i basically said say something to um mgk how would you say it in german do you remember well, i was trying to remember hold on it's it's oh uh, here hold on if i type this in i'll go ahead go okay, ahead okay. i have to like type this in. going I'll to different finish. countries having to learn different languages man dude that's... it was it was cool um Cause it just got to a point where I was like, this is just awkward and oh, okay. you want to be able yeah. to communicate with people. Zag Edvas to MGK. So say something to MGK. It's and, Zag Edvas to MGK. And then people would go crazy. Yeah. Well, they didn't go crazy, but yeah. it was more or less like I'd walk through the line and I'd be like, like, hello, Zag Edvas to MGK for mm-hmm. Kelly vision. Mm-hmm. And they would kind of be like, Oh yeah, sure. I'll say something. And I, the first day I did that, I was like, whoa, like, this is cool. Like, I'm speaking like, the smallest <laughs> bit of German. But I'm still communicating. But, like, I'm still communicating, language. and, like, it was cool, man. I mean, it definitely got, on my, got me out of my comfort zone. So then after that, I would come back in, and the show would go on at, like, 9. And then after the show, I'd edit, or we'd go out somewhere. Or we'd chill on the bus. This past 27 tour, we just kind of chill on the bus a lot, and... He ended up buying us all like Nintendo Switches. So oh man, that's so cool. We you like, guys are all just ripped, dude. At night we'd all have like Mario Kart uh, races, oh and the thing God. is we we can all link, so we just sit there and play Mario Kart. You guys are Kart. on the bus, just yeah. like going him. Yeah, just sit there and play Mario Kart. That's a great way to kill time. It was, that bus looks awesome. super cool. It was like the bus a was double really decker. Cool, yeah. I've never seen one like that before. Never same same it makes more sense you want to well, sleep, and, go up top if you well, want to like have a good time. It's because it's because like the roads they're smaller. Oh, so they have to. So it's got to be able to fit. Um, but you can't stand up on them. So you're you're ah. just like crouched over the entire time, except for Rook. He can walk around that whole thing. He's the drummer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can walk around it normal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it, it was. What time would you guys usually make it to bed by, on average? Um, I mean, on average, it'd probably be like three. Yeah, okay, that's not bad. 
three it just depends man it depends on like you know there's one day where i was up till like 8 30 and we got breakfast at like the hotel we we're staying at and, uh, but we only on this past one this past one wasn't that crazy just because like we just did europe in the summer and that was you know brutal and you guys had your fun yeah exactly that exactly and and there's a lot of other things that we wanted to start working on when we were out in europe like videos and he wanted to start making new music so like our minds were in different places so more or less it was like we would finish a show and he'd come we'd be on the bus and he'd be making music mm -hmm. because uh slim bays and aj aj's the guitar slim's the keys um and uh bases keys and bass they're all producers and i mean slim and bays did like multiple stuff on multiple projects um they did like bad things and um uh i'm blanking golden god yeah. they, they produced golden god the video that i shot um so it's cool that it's all like in-house and basically they can make beats from right there and he can write and you know that home record got sent to us on the summer tour and i have like the first draft i have like a recording of him like writing to it which Damn. is really cool and then like other songs have been made on there and it was cool man it, but our minds were definitely in different places this this last tour yeah because we were just focused on getting shit done uh -huh. which is the i guess can work in your favor when well, you're on the road yeah. like that going back to the whole structure thing that was basically my day yeah. you know wake up kind of chill for a couple hours get something to eat be on my computer so you use like the morning hours before anything, the morning before hours the day before got any, really started any of the guys were up damn so you it were was, getting up way before these guys uh, were not way before not but, way before like some days it'd be like anywhere from like 10 to 12 okay so it's not crazy early mm-hmm um, but then basically, yeah, the crew would already be up setting up the stage, um, tour manager, Dre would be up merch. And so like I have people that were up, but it, it wasn't like, you know, from everyone. Mm -hmm. Cause there's like freaking, I think there was like 16 of us or more. Wow. Yeah. That's a heavy crew. And we're all on the same bus. So it's like literally one big family. Wow. It's it's kind of awesome. You guys are all around. And that goes back we're to all you, around. you get to become like a family so quickly because you're mm -hmm. literally, you know, you're doing everything as a crew together. Eat, sleep. Yeah. Uh, everything is like around the same area and realm. It's, it's yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Cool. <laughs> what do you think Jordan Wazi's purpose is? Man, I just want to make, I just want to make something that at least can make people like, I don't know. That's like a, that's, that's a weird question. I don't know. It's loaded. It's not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know my purposes. I, I think, you know, making cool shit i don't know yeah i mean you make so you make right you're making these there is a purpose i think it's just i know it's a really tough question to ask but you're making these visuals you're taking these pictures people are living living through your lens of what you're capturing mm -hmm. so i guess what do you want people to take away from your work when they see a music video directed by Jordan Wazi when they see a, a television come my, out. My goal, my goal, I, I guess maybe the better way to say it instead of like purposes, maybe my goals for like when people watch my stuff is mm -hmm. like, I just want my stuff to have like a cool impact because we, we are in a realm where, you know, you post a photo and you move on, you know, and it's like, People don't, I feel like people spend time on their stuff, but they don't like think it through. I want to like create stuff that like damn near can make people like emotional as fuck. You know? yeah. I want to make a video where someone's done watching it and they have tears down their eyes or I want to watch it and they want to run through a wall or, you know, like I want to make shit that's like truly impactful and, and awesome and like gives 
purpose to things and i i want to feel established and and make like legitimately cool content and yeah. like you know have fun while doing you're not it. just posting an image and hoping that it gets a like or a video yeah it just gets i, a I cool, don't care good amount of views. i don't care for that stuff because it's just like i told you like it's it's stupid to care about that and it, none of that's real like there's all i care is for the right people to see my shit and the right people to like appreciate it you know like i've gotten compliments from people that i never would have thought i would get compliments from and i'm just like this is so cool you know and i've yeah. met people that n- never thought i would have met and i'm just like this is awesome like you know i don't really know what my, I, my purpose is yet i think that's another thing i just don't know what my purpose is yet i'm still trying to figure it out truly yeah i don't know it's powerful i know where i want to be mm-hmm. you know but i don't know like what my true purpose is i'm it, only 23 i don't know it's powerful to hear because i think people somebody that might listen to this might be following you or have seen your work and Mm -hmm. they think this guy has it all figured out yeah he's clearly in a good position i don't know what i'm doing you know (laughs) it's crazy it's not and it's not a bad thing you know you're you're putting yourself in the right environments you literally are doing incredible things you Mm -hmm. clearly love what you do Mm -hmm. you've you're around a family of people this isn't just Mm -hmm. business relationships this is a family yeah and you can you can see through your pictures and the videos that you've posted that you're in like this is you you know it's mm-hmm. it's so incredible for me to see uh just watching from afar these last couple months to see you could tell i remember like i said i saw that picture that kelsey had posted that you took of uh, the flowers and i was like damn he got him to post that okay <laughs> that's cool and then you just saw the ball start to roll yeah. and you, you just don't see it coming and the opportunity yeah. presents itself and like you said you just take it and you go yeah, you, take you don't it, man. you don't stop you take it because you never know what things could lead to and this has led to you know a lifetime of opportunity yeah <laughs> and it's gonna keep rolling yeah it's only it's gonna keep crazy, going at, at this point it's so you crazy. have everything you need and now it's just like keep punching the bag just keep you know i don't have to say it but for people that are listening i hope that's what they realize when you get these opportunities you just keep going you don't stop and there's a lot of stuff you'll do that you don't want to do but yeah and you started off doing that too you know you start off just taking any opportunity to to really really establish yourself yeah i mean i i would drive you know an hour plus every every time for free to just to do bts for videos yeah i still would do that yeah you know like I, I just love there's i love being on sets and stuff like that and i i love learning because that stuff's like seeing that actually happen in real time is like that sh- that shit's like invaluable like it's so cool yeah i love watching people work it's so cool yeah it's really cool but yeah man take those opportunities and 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 when you're there, seize it and uh, do your best. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to the closing questions, this is when I reverse the role. Allow you to ask me any one question. Could be just about something we talked about. Could be something you wanted to ask me. Go right ahead, fire away. How are you liking California? I absolutely just love it, it, man. Keep it simple. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, as I think I've told you before, and I'm, I've definitely stated on the podcast before, living in LA has been a dream of mine since mm-hmm. I was a kid. Uh, just didn't know when the right time was going to be. And it has, li- I, to think that it's about to be Thanksgiving and we've been here for almost three months is unbelievable because it's flown and it's flown in a good way. Time, just time flies out here. Yeah. Especially because like the weather hardly changes. The weather doesn't change, which is yeah. so ideal. It's so beautiful you out every always, day. You just keep working. You just keep working. And <laughs> it's, it's great. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's, yeah. If you're an athlete, go outside and work out. If you, you could go to the beach and like, dude, it's going to be 90 this week. Like you could legitimately go to the beach. I love that. I absolutely love that, man. <laughs> I, I could not be in a better position. But um, don't move here. There's too many. Yeah, we got too many people. people. There's too many yeah, people on the 405 move. and the 101. There's enough people so, on the road. But uh, California is closed. Yeah, it's closed. x out. x out. Yeah. <laughs> But just uh, more opportunities, a yeah. lot more opportunities to, yeah, that man. I've been able to to really grab onto, and mm-hmm. uh, and now to be able to connect with you like this. Yeah. The first podcast we did, I had came out here for a week just to do podcasts, yeah. and now it's I live here. 
You know, yeah. I can tell people to roll through at any point in time. Yeah. And especially the, the, the people that I'm trying to get onto the podcast, I know they live in LA or they're going to be in LA probably in the next couple months to do yeah. business. Why don't you come on and stop by? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's just elevated this entire movement, the entire brand, the opportunities I've, uh, I was just on set for, uh, Justin Escalona was shooting like a little, a mini film for one of his projects and it was oh, yeah. cool to just be a part of that. And yeah. you know, I, I didn't have that opportunity in Boston. Yeah. Like I creatively feel it's still little so things much out, better. It's still little things out here that like you can find an inspiration from yeah. like just the simple fact of like looking at a palm tree or like yeah. the mountains or, you know, I saw like a mural the other day that was on one of the some building and it was like had to do with like the movies and i'm just like yo like that's down the Super street dope, yeah. like that's cool yeah a lot of people will see images i you know when i think when i was living in la you just see these these captured moments of la and you're like damn this is there's so much going on there and yeah i I'd a lot see, of inspiration out here man. there's a lot especially if you're trying to get into the creative world mm -hmm. i mean there's just endless opportunities and i just want to continue stepping into anything whether it's in front of a camera whether mm -hmm. it's podcasting whether it's making my own videos or i just want to keep creatively getting to a point where i'm creating every day and it doesn't have to be just podcasts it mm -hmm. can be visual it can be it can be a lot of different things so i guess to sum it up i couldn't have been ha i cannot be happier to be here and it's literally just exploded and it just keeps it keeps right. going so it's been good um closing questions i do not remember what you said to this question when I asked you first time, so we'll be able to I document think I know it. What it is, and I think <laughs> we can I think go it's back. Be the same thing. It sure is, buddy. Yeah. There's a picture frame on the wall, yep. right here. First major motion picture. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. That's so ten years from now. Yeah. It's but be now the now the difference in that answer is I know the people I want to be surrounded by, and it's the people I'm with right now. Yeah, because we've talked about it. Yeah, everyone that's there, they want to be there, you know. I mean, that's really fucking cool. You want to shoot and direct the movie? Yeah. 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 And Kels was like, I don't care if I'm in it. I yeah. just want to be there. You, just want, yeah. you know? And, like, <laughs> the thing is, they could all do a freak. They could. They could. We've already talked about all that. You know, like, we're trying to get some short films going and stuff like that and push our creative juices. And I think it's a legitimate goal and something that I'm going to make happen. Straight up. Like, yeah. The, the, all the pieces are falling into play right now. Like it's crazy, man. Patience. It's so doable. It's just and it's patience. Yeah. And the thing is, like, that's in ten years. You say, and obviously, you'd want it to happen faster. But if it happens in ten years, by all means, awesome. Because yeah. that means it happened. Yeah. You know, and that's cool. Um, you know, like I, I also set a goal for like a VMA. We said, I said three years. He was like, let's do it next year. I like that. You have to set it. You have to put it out there, though. You know, speak, yeah. speak it into existence. Yeah. Like, say it out loud and tell it to the it's crew. It's all doable, man. It's all doable. Yeah. It's just, it's keep working and learning. And, um, yeah. I think that, I think it is the work. You know, I had somebody yeah. DM me the other day and, uh, actually earlier today, not the other day, it was earlier. It just feels like it was yesterday, but yeah. about, uh, about his clothing brand and, hoping that this would inspire him because I truly believe it that at the end of the day, it's not just luck. It really is putting in the work yeah. and not stopping. And I mean, yeah. literally every single day you miss out on things and I enjoy working. Yeah. It's weird. I, I am right there <laughs> with you. I used to be one that wanted to go out every weekend and mm -hmm. a lot has changed in my I'd life rather, last year. I'd rather but sit and like, and keep working. Yeah. Celebrate those big, those I need big to be things. around people because I get a little crazy if I'm like not, mm -hmm. but like, I think we all do a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, some people, hard not some people to, like yeah. to just be alone, yeah. which it's cool, but I'm it's, like, I want to be around people all to, day but long. It's nice to like come up from the OC and be able to go to like their house and like be around everybody. And it's like a bunch of creative juices over there. They're just flowing and we you come up with ideas and you just get very creative. And so that's like another really cool thing. Yeah. having access to that it's only more things to come um if people don't already follow you where they, can they find you on social media uh it's just jordan wazzy and then it's j underscore w-o-z-y and then where can they find like the kelly vision videos that we've talked about today? uh those are all on the machine gun kelly youtube mm -hmm. um, just type in kelly vision season seven it'll pop right up. it'll pop right up yeah. and i'll have that linked up in the social media yeah. uh go check out golden god go it's check it out that's that's yeah. by him and you have a new one coming out very shortly yeah. yeah um before i get to closing question thank you for coming back on the podcast yeah, uh man, thanks it's for... truly 
inspiring to see what you've been able to do and clearly sorry i'm talking like really low and i know i'm gonna get made fun of <laughs> no, uh, no you're good I, i'm gonna boost up the volume too you, you'll sound like you're yeah, screaming into it but uh, i'm talking loud slim um yeah man it's just super dope and uh to think that i met you a little over a year ago and you, you still catch one of the best pictures of my of uh, my life on stage oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah, like yeah, yeah, 800 yeah. people in chicago that uh-huh. that shit will forever be one of those timeless moments yeah. but uh I'm, I'm very excited to see what the next things are to come and i i would expect nothing less than greatness so it's it's super yeah. dope to see this stuff man Thank really you. dope um closing question somebody that's listening in doesn't know what their passion is doesn't know what their purpose is i know you said you haven't found yours but you've clearly have found things that are helping you get to that I end mean, destination. I, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah for you, sure you've found the path mm-hmm. what two to three pieces of advice would you give to somebody that doesn't know their path or doesn't have an idea of what they should do next try shit try it just try different things because you don't know until you try mm-hmm. that's it yeah it's, that's, you know like yeah. there, that, that question has been asked to multiple people and i'm sure there's multiple answers and i, I think it, the simplest thing is just try different things and guess what in the last like i think nine episodes that is the first thing that comes out of every Great. person's mouth because that's I, what it is and man. i ask myself should i stop asking this question and ask something different and no I, i'm not because I think it's actually amazing how it's documented mm-hmm. all these different people who are doing completely different things and they all say the same thing. Cause the thing yeah, because it, it, like you don't know until you try. It's simple as that. You know, like you don't know what someone's going to say to you unless you talk to them. You don't know what jumping off a cliff would feel like into the water unless you try it. Yeah. And, or you don't know what skydiving would be like. You're just like these different things. You don't know if you would enjoy something unless you actually do it. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't, I always, you know, just loved creating and I didn't know that like this would be the full path that I would be able to do. I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't know if I'd be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's been and it awesome. just happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Jordan Wazi, yeah. thank you for coming on the podcast, yeah. my man. Thank you. Awesome, man. Yes. We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. If you could leave a one sentence review in the comment section below about what you'd like, what you'd like to see in the future, that would be awesome. And if you really want to make me happy, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date when Bob Bay drops a new video. We'll catch you guys next time.